Hello. Today we are going to discuss altruism and reciprocal altruism. What's this altruism means? Altruism literally means beneficent or beloved in which selflessly oh rather by paying a cost benefiting the others. Behaviors by an individual that increases the fitness of another individual at a cost to itself is called as altruism. Altruism considered as the interaction between animals in which one benefits the other at a cost of itself. In altruism at least two individuals are involved. Thus the interaction is between at least two individuals. One is the helper, altruist, another is the receiver. In altruism, cost and benefits are measured in terms of reproductive fitness or expected number of offspring. So when we try to assess the effect of altruism, it is always how much offsprings are produced. That means how much a specific gene is being perpetuated or is being spread into the population or how much the frequency is being increased of a specific gene. The term altru altruism coined by Comte, it is as an antonym of egoism and literally means other people or somebody else. Now, altruistic behavior is partly influenced by genetics. Identical genetic material show similar pattern of altruism. So if we look into the different society where altruism is prevalent, you will find that it's the pattern of altruism, the phenomenon of altruism is almost similar. And Hamilton recognized altruism as a self-serving one because it benefits the altruist gene, though the altruist is losing its reproductive capability or losing its reproductive fitness, but in turn it is the altruist gene is the copies of the altruist gene being held to held to perpetuate or increase in number. So Hamilton considered is it as an actually self-serving one. Now let us take the picture. Here we can see a group of market is foraging and one of them is keeping vigil against the predator. The one is sacrificing its fitness in terms of getting resources. And it is in fact, it is helping its certain gene, which are altruistic gene, present in its skin to survive and to perpetuate. And that's why it is rightly called by Hamilton as a self-serving one and it's the benefit of the altruist gene. Pure altruism never exist in nature because there should be some sort of selfishness. What's this selfishness? It is to ensure the altruist gene to propagate and how it is ensured? It's through sharing of genes. The shared genes which are found in the kin are being held to propagate. So it's a type of selfishness by the altruist. In evolutionary biology, 
an organism behaves altruistically when its behavior benefits other organisms at a cost of itself. Now let us see what are the conditions of altruism. The first condition, altruism does not depend upon the benefited individuals. The altruist individual controls a phenomenon and the altruist can serve any one of the population or also a member of other population. We know that altruism may be interspecific or intraspecific. We will come to that later. The second condition is the reproductive fitness of recipient should be increased by the altruist behavior. The recipient should be able to produce more offspring through which altruist gene can spread. And the third is the fitness of the altruist may be decreased. It is specifically referred to reproductive fitness being decreased. Altruism is of three types. As I said, it may be intraspecific or interspecies or reciprocal. Intraspecies found in animals which are found, live in group in society. In most animals like mica, ants, bees, buffaloes, we have seen in mica market about sterile uh, 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 in the example we know about the sterile workers of ants and bees and also in herds of buffalo how the leaders and also the mother sometimes risking life encounter the predator to save the cubs and other members of the herd so in case of intraspecies it's normally occurs between the individuals lives in groups in interspecies found among the individuals of different species. But in that case, it's not necessary that both of them stay together or have previous contact. Normally, altruist is powerful than that enemy, mostly that's the predator, so that it can save itself and also the other individuals. Dolphins have been observed to help humans and other dolphin species in distress. Monkeys when see predators like tigers, leopard, etc. make warning call by which others like deer and other grazers are alarmed. The third type is reciprocal where a receiver of benefit will return or reciprocate the benefit to the altruist. It's a special type of alt altruism and the benefit of the altruist will be returned maybe later and it is not mostly not immediate. For example it is found in red winged black bird which we will discuss later in course of our presentation. Few naturalists try to describe mutualism as an altruistic behavior. Now there is very minor difference between mutualism and the altruism. Mutualism is indeed for self-profit while altruism is self-directed. It's directed by the altruist that is self-directed invitation of loss for benefit of others. So in mutualism which in which both the partners are benefited and it's the self-profit and in case of altruism it is the altruist is self themselves or itself invited the loss for the benefit of the receiver as well as there is some confusion regarding altruism and antagonism. 
in altruism one is benefited that is the that is the receiver at the cost of altruist in antagonism being be predator or predatism or parasitism one is benefited at the cost of the other but in case of altruism it is self directed invitation of loss whereas in antagonism it is the infliction of loss by the benefited partner charles darwin's theory of natural selection was all about the survival of the fittest with organisms that are best able to survive and reproduce leaving the most offspring in next generation which we can called as reproductive success organism that contain the most favored gene able to survive and frequencies increased by leaving most offspring in the next generation which is in fact is the reproductive fitness and it's the way of survival of the fittest but in altruism altruist loses reproductive fitness there is a cost in the in terms of reproductive fitness and by losing reproductive fitness benefiting others the receiver and so when the altruist benefit others at their cost sacrificing own well-being for benefit of others why it so occurs why then altruist benefits other when they know that going to lose and it is not matching with the survival of fittest theory of charles darwin biologists define an altruist behavior as an individual lowers of lowers its own fitness and increases the fitness of another individual let us take the instance of honey bee in honey bee colony only one female reproduces that is the queen the rest of the females the workers help by raising her offspring instead of producing their own as we know the workers are sterile so they cannot reproduce if evolution occurs by individual passing on their gene how then this altruist behavior of the workers evolve how altruistic gene of workers evolves when workers are not reproducing if an altruistic behavior lowers an individual fitness and evolution selects for individuals with higher fitness than others how does the altruism behave evolved that's the perplexed question being tried to answer and the solution came from the genes i view of evolution epitomized in selfish gene evolution is not really about the survival of the fittest organism but it is about survival of the fittest gene with natural selection favoring genes that are best able to make copies of themselves in the next generation natural selection favoring genes that increases in frequency in the population a special type of gene which is being proposed as hypothetical thought experiment in richard dawkins 1976 book the selfish gene is called as the green bird genes the green bird genes is a special type of gene and which has been proposed uh, proposed as explanation on the origin and perpetuation of altruism Dar dawkins formulated a thought experiment which was originally conceived by hamilton in 1964 green bear gene which is 
being proposed as a hypothetical gene is actually a phenomenon, green beard is a phenomenon where the individual with genes that produce unique observable traits select or favor or help individuals with the specific trait. It is also evident in human in favoring or helping individual of his own clan or family after recognizing the relatedness. Now in the picture you can see there's the individuals which are in the upper part which are green color helping the individuals having the green colors and that is green bird genes being recognized and those individuals which have these green bird genes are being favored. However, green bird not only always have to show altruism. If a gene is able to recognize whether it is present in another organism it would gain an advantage by harming an organism that does not possess the gene. Here in the picture, it has been, they recognize that in the second part of this actual picture, the individual recognized the individuals without green beard and they are harming this, those individuals without green beard and thereby favoring others. It is this phenomenon has been recorded in soil bacteria Myxococcus janthus where a mismatch at the green bird genes causes individuals to inject a lethal toxin. To highlight how a gene for altruism could evolve Dawkins forwarded green bird thought experiment. He imagined a gene with three effects. It needed to cause a visible signal like a green bird. Number two, it needed to give the ability to recognize the signal in others. And number three, it indeed to able to direct altruistic behavior preferentially towards those showing the silk signal. Here we can take the example. In the first case it needed to cause a visible signal, maybe a language or culture in human. In Assamese society we know Gamosa is being considered as identity of that as a misculture. Recognizing a man with gamosa in a foreign country may be a signal. In second point, it needed to give the ability to recognize the signal in others. One who is from the same clan can easily be identified as signal as I have said in terms of gamosa. And in the third, it needed be to be able to direct altruistic behavior preferential towards those showing the signals, helping the man with gamosa in the foreign countries over the others, knowing he or she may not have any benefit from this helping act. Dawkins and others viewed Greenbeard as just a fantasy due to unlikelihood of a single gene being able to possess all these three properties mentioned above. Despite seeming fantastical, there has however been an explanation of discoveries of real green birds in recent years. Here I have given an example that in Fireland it was discovered by Keller and Ross, in social amoeba by Queller et al. in budding yeast, Smukala et al. in bacteria 
Pathak et al. in microbial eukaryotes, Heller et al. and again in a social amoeba by Gruenheit et al. Altruism in ants and bees can evolve if the gene causing altruism in the workers, that is the altruist, is helping another copy of that gene in another individual such as the queen and art of springs. By doing this, the gene is ensuring its representation in the next generation even though the organism in which it is residing fails to reproduce. Now how can a gene recognize if another individual also carries a copy of it? We have already discussed about the green bird effect. Another mechanism suggested is specialized brain processes evolve over time to allow individuals to discriminate among other members of the same species and this brain process help in identifying the genes. Most of the time a gene does not actually need to recognize copies of it. That means no need of gene build or brain process but only needs to help its skin. Because an organism knows that some portion of its gene, altruistic gene, is also being present. The same gene copy is being present in the genes. We know brothers and sisters share roughly around 50% of their genes. So an altruistic individual by helping sibling knows there is a 50% chance it is helping a copy of itself. That is exactly how altruism has evolved in many species. In case of the social amoeba, social amoeba, dictyostadium, discodium, a single cell organism feed on soil bacteria. When there is lack of food resources, it responds by forming a group with thousands of other conspecific. Here in the picture, that big marked as yellow that's forming the group. And at this point, some of the organism will altruistically sacrifice themselves to form a sturdy stock, which is the yellow colored individual, helping others surrounding the stock, that's a blue colored to reproduce and find a new source. This enables the gene to ensure that a cell sacrifice to form the stock is not in vain as the cells that is helping will all possess copies of the gene. The study of green bird genes is still very much in infancy and we do not truly know how widespread and important they are in nature. In general, kinship has a special place at the heart of the evolution of altruism because it, through helping relatives that a gene can ensure it is helping copies of itself. This may be true in the lives of most birds and mammals because they are social. As they are found in the society, the, there is the chance of copies present in the kin and the kings are very closely associated. But the story could be very different in microbes and marine reciprocal altruism. The concept of reciprocal altruism is an act of helping another individual while incurring some cost for this act. So it's an altruism 
but differ from true altruism that it, the altruist will get the benefit back in due course of time. That is in future the individual who received the help before performs an altruist act towards the individual who helped initially. Now this type of altruism in which reciprocation occur found in related individuals and to occur the reciprocal altruism the recipient and the altruist should encounter frequently so that the reciprocation in future can occur so they have to come in contact close contact very frequently or must be stayed in the same society and being social is necessary for multiple encounters and that increases the probability of reciprocity for better exchange altruist and receiver must have an excellent recognition ability in relation to selfishness the behavior must reduce a donor's fitness in this the fitness of the recipient must be elevated relative to non-recipient non that is in comparison to those who are not getting that altruist derived benefit or driven benefit rather the performance of the behavior of the first altruist must not depend on the recipient of an immediate benefit that means the behavior of the altruist will not depend on the receipt of that is receipt of the benefit from those who are being once helped and in this case cheaters may get involved in which once being helped it may not get back in the help and that is cheating in order to restrict this altruism a mechanism for detection of cheaters must exist otherwise the altruist benefit will be lost now in birds warning calls expose a bird and putting it in danger but warning calls are frequently given by birds it is disadvantageous for a bird to have a predator eat a conspecific because the predator with experience may then be more likely to eat others and also the bird which is actually giving uh, 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 or birds which are involved alarming another bird by giving a warning call tends to tends to prevent predators from specializing on the caller species as food and also the location of availability of the species in this way birds in areas in which warning calls are given will be at a selective advantage relative to birds in areas free from warning calls so warning calls is a type of reciprocal altruism in which today one bird is giving the alarming call next day another bird will giving alarming call and both are benefited and that's a actually idea of reciprocal altruism. here we can cite two examples of reciprocal altruism you can see a bird which is known as black bird with red wing or otherwise known as red winged black bird males is to defend the nests of neighbors as well but he 
the male birds used to take a tit for tat strategy. The males reduce the amount of defense given to neighbors when neighbors males reduced defense for their nests. So whatever amount of benefit is being received similar amount will be given back and that is the tit for tat strategy without being cheated. Another is the vampire bats. Vampire bats feed each other by regurgitating blood. You can see in the picture it's a drawn one and of course downloaded. Since bats only feed on blood and will die after just 70 hours of not eating, this food sharing is a great benefit to the receiver and a great cost to the giver.